Uh, welcome to DrVoiceTV.com, the home for intelligent black people. One thing about this platform is that we are black first, 100% black first all the time. Uh, if you're black, black, blickety black, and black twice on the weekends, put a hashtag B1 in the chat. Uh, hashtag B1 is our calling card to let the world know that we are black first and uh, that we are uh, for our community. B1 means that we are not just black first, but we put our community first. Uh, also, it means that we know we must be one in order to be successful. So uh, if you believe that black people are important enough to be at the top of your priority list, then put your hashtag B1 in the chat. Um, I thought that I would go ahead and uh, talk to you guys about uh, something that just happened. Um, you guys know about the Your Black World channel that we have. Uh, we have different platforms that we operate on, and Your Black World is one of them. We have a, a few hundred thousand subscribers, about 410,000 subscribers. And, and I got this notification, and the notification was basically saying that your channel is suspended for a week. Uh, you, for one week, you cannot upload, you cannot go live, you cannot put any content on that channel at all. <clears throat> and I said, well, what did we do? And that, I saw that it was a violation for alleged hate speech. And uh, the hate speech, uh, allegedly, I said, well, what hate speech, you know, are they referring to? Because when you're black, you're, you, you know, when, when you're black and you speak out about racism, the racist will say that you're that 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 you're producing hate speech. Right. When you start telling America the truth about itself, uh, they they define that as hate speech. So so that definition, that labeling of, of free speech as hate speech is the new type of oppression. That's the new fascism. Uh, that is uh, racism 101. Uh, the new racism is to act like there is no racism unless it's state sanctioned racism, unless it's the racism that they acknowledge, right? So when they start saying Black Lives Matter, then suddenly it's okay to say Black Lives Matter. But when we say Black Lives Matter, it, it, you know, we're being radical, we're being too black, we're being too out of control, we, you know, we're, 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 I'm the angry black man, right? So you know how that is. Y'all know how the game is played, and uh, we're used to the game, right? We understand that when you're black, you are at war uh, from the time you're born. I, I I shared a baby picture of myself when I was little, and uh, and I looked at that baby picture, and I'm going to try to see if I can pull it up so I can show it to y'all. Uh, but, it, you know, in this baby picture, it, I hadn't seen it for years. I hadn't seen I saw it one time many years ago, and I just saw it again. And uh, I'm gonna pull up on the screen. If you're not, if you want to see it on the screen, just go to drvoicetv.com. You can see it. If you're watching on Instagram, you can't see it. Uh, so I was looking at this picture, right? And uh, in this picture, I, I got really emotional when I saw this picture of me as a baby. Uh, and the reason I got emotional is because um, it wasn't until uh, maybe a few years ago that I found out from my mother that uh, when we were born, I asked my mother. I said, "Who was in the, you know, who was in the delivery room when I was born? Uh, who was there?" And I thought that <clears throat> maybe that, <clears throat> you know. Cousin Willie would, would have been out in the hallway, you know, grandma's in the operating the room. You know, my dad, I knew my daddy wasn't there because my daddy was 15 when he when, when my mother got pregnant with me. And uh, I don't I don't even know the man, to be honest with you. And uh, and I asked my mother, I said, who was there at the hospital with you with, on the day I was born? And she said, uh, nobody. I said, what do you mean? Nobody. She said, nobody. Um, she said they, they dropped me off uh, to go give birth. Uh, I gave birth and then we went outside and we waited uh, for them to pick us up uh, to take us home. And I said, so you mean that when we were born, like there was nobody there except me and you? And she said, yeah, it was me and you and the nurse and the doctor. And that's it. And and that that really kind of broke my heart. It made me think about, first of all, I commended my mother and I commend all the mothers out here for the courage to, to give birth to children in, in difficult circum circumstances. I mean, if there was anybody, if there was any black child that was a candidate for abortion, and you know, black boys, black babies are always the first candidates for abortion because they don't they don't want black men like me to be born, right? It'd be okay if I was a basketball player or a thug rapper or a guy that was on his way to prison. They can they can control all that. What they can't control is this. What they can't control is this. And it is kind of funny. I, I didn't even plan to do it that way, but it's kind of funny that the baby's like got a, he's pointing at his temple like this, right? So I so I, I I think that's hilarious that that you know maybe I could put my, my picture next to the baby's picture and you and, and you can imagine what it was, you know. So so here I am, I'm sitting here like this, right? I got the black fist in one hand, I'm pointing at my temple with the other. And uh, and so it, I'm sure it was a coincidence, but who knows? Maybe God was speaking to us in, in mysterious ways. I have no idea. But the, but the point of the matter is to say that um, I did not know at that time when I was born that war had been declared on me. Uh, they declare war on the black boy, the black male from the time he's born. And uh, why do I bring this up? Well, I bring this up because um, I think one other prototypical example of how war is declared on the black male is when you look at the way America has responded to Louis Farrakhan. 
Uh, for many, many decades, uh, they have done everything they can to silence Farrakhan. They've done everything they can to make sure that he can't speak to the public. They've done everything they can to make sure that nobody gets to hear the words directly from his mouth. They've done everything they can to make sure that they interpret his words and then and then they go tell the public what he said, as opposed to letting the public actually hear what he said. And if you recall, the reason that they do this is because tw about 25, 30 years ago, they made the mistake of letting Farrakhan have access to something that only white people get in America, which is freedom of speech. They made the mistake of allowing Farrakhan to go on to the Donahue show and to just make his case to the American people. And he went on that show and this man was masterful on this show. He broke them down, chopped them up, chewed them up and spit them out. Does anybody else, give, give me a yes or no in the chat. If you remember when Farrakhan was on the Donahue show, he blew it out of the water. It was an epic, epic, epic interview, epic, epic conversation. And, and that was really an artifact of a couple of things. Number one, the man is extremely intelligent. We know this, right? That's Those are facts. Uh, number two, he had truth on his side. He had truth on his side. See, you over here defending a lie. This man, this intelligent man is bringing truth to you. So if you are a, a dummy and a liar, then a dummy and a liar cannot stand face to face with an intelligent person who has access to the truth. Because all he has to do is, is just lay the truth on the table and the truth is going to eat you up. He ain't even got to be malicious toward you. That's why Farrakhan can, with a smile on his face, chop you up, chew you up, and spit you out. And, and then never even give you an idea that, that, that you know, never be even in one second make you think that he hates you. He's not a person that walks around with hate in his heart. He walk, he has love in his heart, love for black people. Now, the, the thing that's interesting about America is that America interprets love for black people to mean hate for white people. So the more you love black people, the more they will think you hate white people. So when, so when you look at this, it didn't surprise me one bit when Farrakhan was condemned or when they went to my YouTube channel and said, we're going to suspend your channel because you shared an address by Louis Farrakhan and we define that to be hate speech. Um, give me a yes or no. Give me a yes or no. Have, have you heard any examples um, at, at any point uh, of, of Louis Farrakhan or members of the Nation of Islam getting a bunch of rifles and AK-47s and going into white neighborhoods and just killing people by the thousands? Have you have you heard of any plan for them to go get a bomb and go blow up people and, and commit a terrorist act in America? Have you heard any of that? Has any of this occurred? Right. Uh, you know, it, it has, 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 have you heard anything about them getting together and just deciding we're going to just go and we're going to go take out revenge on all of our enemies and, and tear them down one by one? Yes or no. Right. The answer is no. There, there is none of that. Right. But but it's ironic to me that they will take a Farrakhan or in the nation of Islam and blend them in with the KKK and the neo-Nazis and say that it all represents hate. No. They, they, they're not they're not even in the same tribe of of, of, of thought. Uh, they're, they're not even in the same league of action in terms of how they conduct themselves. Uh, here you have men and women in the nation of Islam who conduct themselves with the highest standard of integrity uh, versus individuals who um, who probably do need to be locked up and dealt with. Uh, who have a track record of violence against other people, right? So we know what this is, right? So I'm not here to really uh, get too far into that. Uh, I just kind of thought it would be interesting to talk about this in a way where we can kind of look and see what's really going on and how this all works. Because just a few minutes ago, I saw uh, a video released by the homie Ice Cube. Ice Cube did a video and he talked about uh, the, the, the political environment that's going on in America right now. Now, now just so you know, this week, uh, Ice Cube's going to come on drboystv.com. Uh, your Black World got shut down, but we got backup platforms. Uh, because when I started doing this as a public scholar, I knew I was going to war. And I knew that uh, when you go to war uh, and you fire at the enemy, the enemy is going to fire back. I knew this. And the enemy doesn't play fair. Life is not fair. So uh, any whining Negroes that want to whine about how the white man ain't fair, just get used to it. That's how war works. War ain't fair. War don't feel good. They're not going to tell you when they're going to attack you. They don't tell you what the surprise is going to be. They just do it. And they come after your most vulnerable spot. And if all you do is lay down like a little punk, well, you know, sit down on the ground like a little bitch and cry and scream every time they, they, they do something dirty to you, then you're not ready for war because you don't understand. You've never studied the history of warfare in this country and around the world. War is a dirty game. So uh, when I look at that picture of that little baby, I look at that baby and I, I, I think about just I get scared for that little 
little child because I think, man, he was born in the middle of a war zone. They did not even want him to be born. Somehow I slipped through the cracks. My 17 year old mother, single mother, born in poverty. If a white woman had gotten a hold of my mama, some lady from the Planned Parenthood clinic had gotten a hold of my mama, they would have talked to her for a couple hours and said, because we care about you, we need you to go kill that little black boy in your, in your belly. We need to just, just kill this baby so that this baby's never born because it'll make your life easier if he's never born. Because my God, you, a child who's born poor is, 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 is worse off than a child who's born dead. Right. And and I'm sorry. Uh, years later, uh, I, I beg to disagree. Me, me and my mama didn't have money, uh, but we had plenty of love. We had some tough years, but we had far more great years. We struggled for a little bit. I was born in the projects, the projects. But we we, we had we got the thrill and the excitement of watching our lives improve every step of the way through hard work, education and personal responsibility. Those are the things that my, my parents taught me. And uh, and my mother loves me. I love her. And we've had a wonderful time together on this earth. So uh, so so I, I think about that. I link the baby. I linked the Farrakhan incident where, where they, they just banned the YouTube channel because allegedly that's hate speech. That's Sheriff Farrakhan's address. I would do it again 10,000 times. You're not going to convince me to not support the Nation of Islam. That's just never going to happen. Just so you know, I, I see the emails. People send me stuff. Well, what about this? What about that? Sorry. No, no, no. Loyalty means being loyal. So I'm loyal. I, I'm down with the Nation of Islam. That that divide is never going to occur. And so um, with that said, though, it also means maybe we need some backup plans as well. So uh, I'll lay out a couple of backup plans uh, in case they do shut me down. Eventually, that's the thing. The reason I don't want to be too mainstream, I don't want to be too big, I don't want to be out there too much is because when they really declare war on you and they put their sights on you, they do everything they can to come after you, okay? And I and I have no doubt at some point <laughs> they're, they're going to they're gonna load up and lock and load all the weapons because right now what we're doing is actually working. We're elevating the consciousness of black people politically. We're elevating the consciousness of black people economically. When you mess with a white man's money and you mess with his politics, you mess with, with his economic dominance over black people and you mess with his uh, political dominance and his political mind control over black people, then he's going to play dirty. And, and fight back. So here's one thing you can do. If you want to uh, remain connected, just in case anything goes wrong, um, I've joined this app that I really like called Parler, P-A-R-L-E-R, Parler. Uh, the par on the Parler app, I'm at Dr. Boyce Watkins. Now, Parler, I think it was started by conservatives. I don't give a shit. I don't give a fuck if it was started by aliens. All I know is that on Parler, they have the one thing that I want which is freedom of speech and freedom of expression. That is it. I do not need Twitter telling me what speech is acceptable and what's not. I don't want Instagram telling me that it's okay to say this, but not okay to say that. I don't want YouTube telling me what that, that I should only listen to Dr. Fauci when it comes to COVID, but I can't listen to somebody else who has a different opinion, but better credentials. I don't want to hear all that. I don't want Facebook telling me, well, well, this is acceptable news and this is unacceptable news. I want all the news. I want all the information. I don't want anybody telling me what information is okay and what information is not because I know they play these games. So with the Parler app, I like this app. I tried it out. It's, it's, it, it operates a little bit like a mix between Instagram and Twitter, I think, because they give you the, the, you get a lot of space to write a lot of stuff and you can throw up images and videos and all that. So you can follow me at Dr. Boyce Watkins, right? Uh, and this is, and the reason I'm, I'm mentioning this, and, and, and just know at Parler, I have no business affiliation with them at all. And again, I don't care who started it. I just want freedom. That's it. You ain't got to give me nothing. Just let me be free. You ain't got to be my ally. Just, just leave me the hell alone. I don't need you telling me Black Lives Matter. Fuck you. I know my life matters. How about this? I'm going to go tell black people that Black Lives Matter so that we can get our shit straight so we can go out here and fight this battle. OK, so uh, I like the app. I'm at Dr. Boyce Watkins. Feel free to follow me there. Uh, another thing you can also do is you can text the word Boyce, text the word B-O-Y-C-E, Boyce to 31996. Uh, if you're on the text list, I can text you when I go live. So that means if, if something happens, I got to move to a different platform or everything gets shut down, I got to go somewhere else, I can text you and say, hey, y'all, we're going to meet over here, right? And uh, so if, you, if you're in and that's of interest to you, feel free to text the word Boyce to 31996. The last thing, last but not least, is we do have a platform that we own uh, called Black Enough, B-L-A-G-G-E-N-U-F. I know it's hard to spell, but I but it was kind of my creative way to kind of say, let's invent a word that we actually own. So we actually have a trademark on this on this term. It's Black Enough. It's right there on the screen, B-L-A-G-G-E-N-U-F, on blackenough.com. It operates a lot 
like Facebook. And um, we tried building it on our own, like hiring, you know, tech technology people to actually build the thing out. It was terrible. We lost a lot of money. It, it, they, it kept breaking down. It was just a big mess. Um, and so we went with Black Enough, which is run by Mighty Networks. But uh, that's a place where lots of us gather as well. Uh, there are tens of thousands of people on there in our Black Enough space. And you can also put in your zip code and find people that live close to you. Right. So if you want to have gatherings and stuff like that, start an investment club. You can actually find people on Black Enough that will do that with you. OK, so feel free to go take a look at that. And that's pretty much it. Um, I just wanted to tell you guys what was going on. Um, I'm a big believer in this basic idea that, um, you know, you, you, it, it reminds me of when I was at Syracuse University. I was going through hell over there and, they were, you know, I was dealing with nonsense with uh, with people, um, you know, just kind of doing, again, playing dirty tricks. Right. I, I had to learn in a grown man's world and you go to war. People are going to do dirty things, right? They're, they're not going to play fair. And you got to know this, right? Tell your sons this stuff so they don't run around here whining like little bitches. Like, like we can't have black men run around here in miniskirts crying because because we well, had a white man did this to me. And he did that to me. Well, you know, if you're a man, you don't walk around bragging about what another man did to you. Uh, that makes you less of a man. And you are as good of a man as he is. But you got to make that decision. Like, like, you know, strength is a choice. Manhood is a choice. Discipline is a choice. Commitment is a choice. You know, determination is a choice. So every day you must make the, the choice to be committed. You must make the choice to be determined. Uh, in Vietnam, um, I'm going to share this and actually I'll finish telling you about Syracuse in a minute. But in Vietnam, I was really inspired. I watched um, a really long documentary about the Vietnam War because my daddy was a Vietnam veteran. Shout out to all the veterans that are in here. Thank you for your service. Uh, and my daddy uh, told, you know, he told me about the Vietnam jungles and, and, uh, and, and, you know, talk about the choice of determination. <clears throat> Two things that were interesting about that with my father in particular. One, like a lot of black men when he was there, uh, you know, he used the, the heroin to kind of escape from his environment. And when he came back, he had a heroin addiction. And I said, well, how did you overcome the heroin addiction? Like, you know, a lot of people can't ever, ever kick that. And he said, I made a choice. Um, I decided I didn't want the life of a dope addict. I wanted the life of a father, the life of a black man. And uh, that was one thing that really stuck out to me, stuck out to me about choice. Just make a choice. The second thing was um, he said that when he first got there, there were um, he was in this. He's, he's eight, 17 years old and he's in the middle of a ditch in, in 10,000 miles away from home in this jungle and he's hearing gunfire in the background, bombs dropping in the background and he's supposed to be trying to sleep. And he was laying in this ditch and he said, when I was in that ditch, I made a choice. I made a decision that I was going to do whatever I had to do in order to survive. He said, I'm going to do whatever I got to do to survive. So what I'm telling you in general, black people is that everything's a choice. And uh, the last little Vietnam story I'll share that I thought was really interesting. I, I study warfare because I think it's important to understand you know, how your enemy thinks and what you're dealing with, what you're up against. Um, and so, or, and how bad things could actually get. So uh, one other story about Vietnam that was really interesting was this, this documentary was filmed 30 years after Viet the Vietnam war was over and uh, they interviewed, they were able to bring together Viet Minh and Viet Cong soldiers. They were able to talk to people from the South and, and talk to people from the North. And they were able to talk to them about what their strategies were during the war. Well, here's one thing that happens really interesting. The United States and the white man with all these weapons that they have, you know, just like the same way they they they, they take us down with their technology or they try to. Uh, they were using their bombs. They, they, they had so many bombs. Right. So they went to Vietnam and they said, we're going to demoralize the people in the Viet Cong. We're going to demoralize the north. And what they did was they went on a bomb, a bombing raid like you would not believe. They dropped more bombs on tiny little northern Vietnam than all the bombs that were dropped on all of Europe by all the countries combined in all of World War Two put together like like all the bombs dropped on all the countries by all the other countries and all of world war ii combined right and you're like how did they survive this and so so here's what happened when they would drop all the bombs they say okay we're gonna we're gonna cut off the supply routes we're gonna blow up these bridges we're gonna blow up this this route blah 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 every time they did it the next day two days later the bridge would be built again right they blow it up again two days later the bridge would be back up again and they were like how the hell are these people that resilient where they keep on rebuilding these damn bridges. And they asked them 30 years later, they said, how did you do this? We dropped all these bombs on you and you just, it didn't stop you. You, you kept going. And they said, we had, we have, we had saying uh, that we share with each other, which was if they blow it up, we will rebuild. If they blow it up again, we will rebuild again. And I said, I'll be damned. I mean, if, if they ain't, if they ain't like, like a statement, that's not like one of the keys to success that if you put that in your pocket and you commit to an ideology like that, you can't be beat.
You cannot be stopped. You can't be slowed down. If you just say, you know, like when they talk about Black Wall Street, I hear a lot of folks say, well, why should we build Black Wall Street? Because they're going to blow it up. They're going to tear it down. Well, then you rebuild again. Well, well, well then they're going to tear it down again. Well, well, then you do it again. You, you don't you don't stop. It's a choice. It's a decision. Right. So what decision are you going to make? What decision? What choice are you going to make in your life? You got to make a damn choice. Right. So 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 at the end of the day, what I would say to you guys is uh, make a choice in your life. Whatever it is you want to do, whatever you, you try, are trying to accomplish, whoever you're trying to go, uh, make a choice. And if you make the right choice and you're committed to that choice uh, through rain, sleet, snow or hail uh, till death do you part, uh, you choose to be about that life no matter what, then you're going to win. So today, right now, I'm going to tell you right now, I choose black. I choose black and free. That's my choice. That means I'm going to live as a free black man. I'm going to die as a free black man. I'm going to breathe, eat and sleep and shit as a free black man. Everything I do will be that of the actions of a free black man. I will solve every problem as a free black man. Every every step I take, every move I make, every action I pursue will be that of a free black man. Whatever that means. Sometimes it'll feel good. Sometimes it's going to be bad, but it's never going to change. Right. So in your life, choose black. Everybody type the word black in the chat. Choose black. Hashtag B1. I'm going to finish up. I got to go spend some time with Alicia before I go to bed. But I wanted to let you guys know what was going on, what was on my mind. And uh, let me give you I'll give you the link to the parlor app one more time. If you want to follow. Uh, I like this app a lot. Um, again, they're not paying me to endorse it or anything, but I just like it. And I think it's a great place to follow. And I, I, I don't care who started it. I just like the fact that they give us freedom of speech to say what we want. So uh, you can go follow me on parlor. P-A-R-L-E-R-E-R, not O-R, P-A-R-L-E-R. And uh, I'm at Dr. Boyce Watkins. And also, um, if you guys still want to join the Black Wolf Bootcamp, I think you got a few more hours uh, to get the discount. It's a massive, like 72% off. So feel free to take a look. We, we start our classes on January 7th. So if you'd like to join us, you can go to blackwealthbootcamp.com. There's a URL for that. Okay, guys. So I'm out of here. Have a good night. And I uh, thank you for listening. And uh, I will see you guys soon. Be good. Peace.